welcome to Leak Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special uh, show today. Uh, we are going to be tasting some really cool wine, and uh, I bet you, probably out of all my viewers, you probably don't even you've ever even heard of it, if you've even tried it. So uh, I'm real excited about this. I got a great invitation uh, to uh, come here to the barn door to taste this. I've got uh, Steve. And Kellis, uh, Steve's here with Barn Door. Kellis with, with uh, Republic National. They're a very large distribution uh, company. Just, just <laughs> they're kind of they're kind of in a few places. But um, so we're gonna come here and uh, taste this wine and talk about it. So first, before we get into the wine, we're gonna talk about these uh, two fine gentlemen that have become my new best friends, and uh, we'll see what's going on. We'll start off with you. Well, I'm Steve Strauss, the general manager of the Barn Door Restaurant, and we have been remodeling a little bit. We opened up our new room, the Kellis Room in the, in the restaurant, <laughs> the, wine room. The, the wine room here, and uh, so we're trying to expand our wine list a little bit and add some more European feel to, to the list and round it out a little bit. Not cool. We've been almost exclusively California for the forever and we're going to start adding some European wines to the list. All right, great. Now, and this has only been open for what, a month? This the room? room? only been open for about a month. All right. But how long has the barn door been around? The barn door has been around for 56 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's about time we do some, do some, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. They built a year out of the barn. There you go, see? They built a barn door. Did I just say I was <laughs> okay. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Kels, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself here. Uh, my name is Kels Chandler. I work for the Republic National Distributing Company. Uh, actually, it's the old block distributing company. So right. Alan Reed and Eddie Block, locally owned company, expanded dramatically. It's a really humble uh, everyone about wine. There's over 2,000 varieties just in it. 
Okay, which is horribly humble. Uh, this particular one uh, is very interesting, extremely well done. They discovered, I think there's only 25 uh, acres of it uh, when you first discovered it. And uh, to be really honest with you, there's several indigenous graves in Italy right now that they're saving. A few of them they shouldn't bother. <laughs> <laughs> He's like seriously. No. I, I won't. I won't mention them. But uh, we we they come up all the time. People come up. And go, oh, here's a new native grape that we discovered, and they're trying to save this grape. And you try the wine. And you go. Mm, well, okay. Maybe they should let that one go. Um, but this particular wine, uh, everybody in my company, everybody that's tasted it has been very impressed. Okay. Very very easy to drink. Very interesting. And when we drink it, I'll. I'll about where we think it might have come from. Cool. That's awesome. Well, I say let's go ahead and just get into it and uh, let's check it out. So, I am absolutely excited about this. And like I mentioned uh, to these guys before, the whole Sommelier School thing and this week's Sommelier School, the fact that it's Northeast Italy and I wasn't really sure where this was, where this was from, and when I got the, when I got the initial invitation to uh, to do this, um, I did more research, and then I was like, oh, that's awesome! I spilled some on me. That's all right. Spit, um, spit bucket. Spit bucket. Yeah. Professionals use spit buckets. Yeah. I have, a, I have a, uh, um, I'm a, I have a tin. <laughs> I have a tin. I have a tin for my spit bucket. So it's like it's a uh, for. Um, Ginger snaps. That's the, because it was, was available for the first, the very first show. I didn't have a spit bucket. I'm like, what are we gonna use? I'll just use the red tin. There's a story as to why the red tin is there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's trust me, we'll be drinking some of this. All right. So let's just check it out here. You know why you spilled wine? Yeah. <laughs> it airs. It's a little cool. It looked cool. Yeah. That's what yeah, when you when you when you see somebody doing this, oh, they they're really. They're really cool, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know. <laughs> oh, there's some skills. I can see if you will do that. No, we'll, we'll do this. I like that. I definitely like this. It's so dirty. It's so dirty. Drink it. Hey, you don't have to spit. Just drink it. Actually, I uh, we have meetings every Friday morning. It started at 8.30 with suppliers. We usually have about 15. Nice. You have to spend everything. Oh yeah, you do. You really do. Because, well, when you really do like more, more professional tasting, mm -hmm. uh, and this like tomorrow I'm going to the grand tasting. You don't drink all the wine you, you, because then you can't. One, you can't evaluate it by the end of the night. And two, you, you aren't going to be able to drive home. You're not going to be able to enjoy it. Uh, I went to the the one in April at the Alamo Dome, and and I spit every wine out. And the people that worked the tables were so appalled that I was spitting wine. They, they actually asked me, don't you like it? I'm like, no, actually, I actually really like it a lot. And they didn't understand what I was doing because everybody else was taking it as an excuse to get drunk. Uh, the, the KLRN, I believe that was the KLRN. Yeah, it was. And, and it's, it's a great event because I think it gets a lot of people out that normally don't consume wine. And that's kind of what it's all about is to get people to try things. Right. But as far as being a lot of very serious wine tasters are probably not. No, and, and you can tell because the people that are at the tables, yeah, the people at the tables really, um, they, they didn't uh, really know anything. You know, they're, they're, you can tell they're probably volunteers. <coughs> they're probably volunteers, and they were just told, just pour some wine, and they didn't know anything, so. 13.5. 13.5? Yeah. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that's really pretty high for so as far as value right now, it's a little bit too. It's I'm getting it. such an unusual nose. It's really, really. Mm, I like it. I was trying to read up on this, and they threw a lot of things, and I'm like, really? I, 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 if I get any of that, I'll be, I'll be amazed. I'm getting this stuff. Um, I'm just getting some. To me, I'm getting brighter red fruit, not not darker, not. Not the earthy that I, I read. This is supposed to be earthy, so maybe more of the palate supposed to be earthy. But I don't really get the earthiness on the on the nose. I was trying to study ahead of time to see what I was supposed to get, but it's, there's a minerality. In there. Yeah, okay. it's almost like the pit of, of some fruits, uh, it, it, like cherry pits. 
that's not quite it's really unusual. It's, and there, to me, there is some earthiness in there, and a, little, and a little spice, perhaps. I get more of the spice. Very inviting. And, and uh, definitely, definitely old world. I would not classify this just from smelling it as a new world wine. Right. Even though it's got 13.5% alcohol content. Mm, it's got a very nice to it. Yeah, it's mm. All right. Very great in palate. Very seamless. Medium tannins, a little dust. In the tannins towards the finish. Very easy to drink. Uh, yeah, I'm getting the dust and the tannins. Yeah, it's not heavy. Boy, it's good with it. Just like it. Kind of venison. Mm -hmm. Venison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quail. Quail. Well, it's, 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 yeah. it's got that gamey characteristic to it already, just a little bit. It's got a little bread of my seeds in it, I believe, especially on the back side. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be fabulous with any kind of game. The, the, I sat around with a bunch of people and were trying to figure out where this grape came from, you know. Uh -huh. Pinot Noir became Pinot Blanc, became Pinot Gris, and everything mutates and, and goes around. And we sat there, and for some reason, we all started talking about Tempranillo in Spain. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking about San Giovese. Like, well, maybe like something between San Giovese and Tempranillo in there. So maybe like a little cross? Could be, you know, you never know. Or a mutation. 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 Uh, so, uh, but very inviting, very clean. This is really nice. Well and done. Well made. It's always great to be drinking. Yeah. It's just good. Brown, good wine. I do I still also still get a little bit of spiciness to it. I just a little bit of fruit. Just because I got a mushroom now. Very pretty wine. And the neat thing is it's 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 a geeky wine. But it's so easy to drink. It's approachable. It's very approachable. And you know, there, there's so many wines out there that are fun, that are interesting, that are geeky. And when you put them in the public's hand, a lot of times they're, they're, they're just a little too out there. But this right. wine is so drinkable and so easy to drink. I would call it an entry level wine, perhaps, but. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, a wine, definitely a wine that, you know, if, if you like wine, it's, it's, if you're into wine, this is something that you If you like Pinot Noir, if you like Pinot Noir, if you like Tempo Neo, if you like San Giovese, now, what's what's the retail of this, or is this going to be a restaurant only thing? You know, it's really hard for me to quote that. Uh, you know, it's, I'm in the wholesale business, and I call all restaurants. Uh, gosh, be about forty dollars. Thirty. I'm not sure. See, it's it's hard for me. To, you know, right. It is. Is this is this a wine you're going to carry? Louis, or? Louis, Louis would have about probably twenty five, thirty dollars. Twenty five to thirty. Cool. A, lot of, a lot of suppliers. Very uh, affordable. Yeah. For this quality of wine. Good. I think I just got the mushrooms. Sometimes my nose falls behind some other people. That and uh, just takes me a little bit longer. And a black bit cherry. I think so, yeah. yeah. I got the cherries right there on the finish. Yeah. Very well. Very good. Pork. But this was important. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, when I drink wine, I get hungry. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know, where's the venison? Where's the quail? Where's the pork tenderloin with the with the cherries? With the cherries. Oh, the cherries. Oh, the cherries. The cherries. cherries. <laughs> yeah, really, really good. I read mean, somebody's quote. Uh, so, would you say maybe put some venison and put some cherries on it? Well, yeah. You. you uh, That's a reference to somebody else. I'll tell you the references in a little bit, but. Some cherries on top. Yeah, that's a reference to somebody else's uh, show. I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. <laughs> mess with that. Uh, no, it'd be like a great chutney sauce. And a lot of times, yeah. pork. Uh, people use like a, a, a blueberry or a, uh, or a cherry chutney. You know, you okay. Cook it with, cook it with, etc. And you get that incredible dense dimmy glaze at the end with that great. Yeah, this this would work perfectly. I agree. I think this is awesome wine. Um, Normally when I do like interviews, well I don't do many, but when I do interviews with people that have something to do with the wine, I don't necessarily score it. Um, as far as like my Skype interviews, because I'll do some online Skype interviews, so if I have a wine maker, I won't necessarily, I'll just say I like it or not. I won't necessarily put a score. Um, 
I'll tell you, I like this wine. I like this wine a heck of a lot. Um, it's a perfect 100. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, it's a perfect 100, right? <laughs> but, but uh, let, me, let me throw something else in before you score it. The I stay. name of the company that brings the wine in is called Underdog. Underdog. In, I did see that on the back. I forgot that. Just, yeah. Um, so they, they, are, they, they have a great lineup of wine. They, they, they have some very, very interesting wines. Very good wines. That is cool. Um, you know, I, I'm going to... See, I'm really bad with giving out any scores above a 90 because, I don't know, I just kind of feel that if, it, if it's going to be a 90 or above, it's really going to wow me. And I haven't had too many wines. My personal palate that wows me, um, though I did have one this week that I thought was really good and really, it really was perfect for me and I gave it a 90. Um, I think I'd give this like a 91, 92 because I'm wowed by it. Um, so, <laughs> I'm the Robert Parker, but I can tell you that... Uh, uh, it was actually, of all wines, it was uh, Fire Hose Gewurz, oh, okay. uh, which they don't make that. They, they make a Fire Hose Riesling now, which I'm really disappointed because the Gewurz was wonderful. Yeah, they gave it exactly a 90, and uh -huh. it, it, it's perfect for my palate. Is this they the Riesling? They don't make it. They don't make the, yeah, they don't, the sip, they don't, they don't make that. They don't, they don't, yeah, they don't make, they don't make the Gewurz meter anymore. They still have bucket. But, uh, you're not well. yeah. They only make, when you go to the website, they only show the Riesling. They have no mention of this. And this, I don't know if, was it 2007 we'll have, we had? We'll have, we'll have it from. Yeah, this is, this is back when they called it Rebel Wine, but now they're called Three, three Thieves. We'll have it about another, uh, probably three or six months. Cool. Okay, yeah, it was uh, at my local world market, uh, is where I buy a lot of wine. Uh, so, yeah, uh, when it comes to rating wines, yeah, if I can comment, it, it's very American. Right, as I have to say, especially then. They're going to go, I want to learn about wine. So they go, Wine Spectator, Robert Partner, and all these, all these. Right. And, and I've actually seen them walk into retail stores with the tear out sheet. You know, Looking for I want this, 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 and this. They're it's not a personal thing. They're, right? they're not available. Okay? Right. By, by the time they get published like that, they're not available. And you're going to be paying a lot of money for something that's, you know, probably a great wine, but. Are you going to understand it? I always recommend that people go to a wine shop in their neighborhood where they get to know the wine people there and let them know what your palate is, what your taste profile is, that you wine tastings constantly. Right. And bounce off of that. Yeah. Find where your little niche is and don't ever be afraid to experiment. If we were if we were born and raised in Italy or France, we'd be drinking wine since we were five years old. We'd be drinking watered down wine with our with our meals, like right. milk. But it's, it's, it's a way of life. It's simple. It's, it doesn't take scores you know, to, to necessarily enjoy one. But, uh, that's fine. Yeah, and you know, and, and, you know I, I do the scores. I think, you know, a lot of, of course, Americans, and we do all these scores to kind of, I don't know, give people a, kind of an idea of what we think of it. But really the way I look at it, if I say I really like a wine and I give it a good score, listen to what I say I, I find in the wine, and you'll eventually learn that there are certain things about my palate that I, that I like then I'm going to score a wine higher. I mean, these two guys could have given this thing an 82, or they could have given it a 70, they could have given it a 100, who knows? Robert Parker would give that an 84. An 84? Robert, Robert Parker, you know, it's very well respected, but he loves huge, extracted, over tannic. Right. Robert Parker, Robert Parker was after, actually kicked out of Burgundy about 10 years ago because he doesn't understand Burgundy. He has to send someone else in. They don't... They will not allow him in Burgundy. They, uh, he has to send someone else in to evaluate because he doesn't understand Pinot Noir. Yeah. He wants big, extracted, huge, tannic wines. And if you understand that when you read Parker, if that's what you're looking for. But as you progress, in my opinion about wine, as you learn more about wine and enjoy wine with food, you'll probably take a step back mm -hmm. to things that are a little more elegant, a little more refined, and easier to drink with food. Easier to drink, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to be able, you know, I like to be able to have wine that pairs well with food, but I also like to be able to have a wine that I can just drink. I don't necessarily need food with it, but, um, you know, it helps to have it, but it's just nice if I come home from work and I just want some wine. Like last time when I came home from work, I drank, I drank a glass of, uh, I drank a glass of the, uh, the fire hose. You drink white wine? Oh my God, I drink white wine. Oh. And I love it. And, and about a month ago, I did a, a little quick analysis of how many whites and reds I've done on the show. 
and I came down to uh, it was almost exactly a 50-50 split. Yeah. I mean, I buy wine. I just look at wine. I, I like I like wines. I like Diverse Mir. I like Pinot Grigio. Um, I like Rieslings. Kind of um, Chardonnays are hit and miss for me. I like I like the unoaked. I like Chablis type. You know, Chardonnays. I don't like overly oaked Chardonnays. So like. Today's wine, this is Friday by the way, today's wine is running hair out of Maryland and they have a Chardonnay. And I gave it like an 88. I liked it. They said it was lightly oaked. So what did they mean? I don't know. But um, it didn't have this like buttery, over the top taste to it. It was almost like a cleaner crystal, like I had a Passaggio wine, which uh, Cindy uh, was so gracious to be one of my first Skype interview. And when I did like the prep for it, I asked her, you know, is it an oak wine? Is it not? She was unoaked. I'm like, perfect. Because now I'm not going to feel bad about saying I don't like wine. You know, if it was like a really heavily oak Chardonnay. Like, so it was a, say like a Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. Like, it has its place. They pulled back on it. It's, it's, you know, but it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. Americans have kind of a herd mentality. And 10 years ago, it was big, oaky, buttery Chardonnays. Right. Now everybody, in fact, I saw a wine one time that was 200% they were putting it in a barrel and aging it for a year and then putting it in another new barrel. Oh my goodness. That was just absurd. Now we're running in the other direction. Unoaked. Yeah. Un un Stainless no steel. Yeah. No malactic rotation, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, and what we're running into, you have to have really great grapes to start with. And Chablis, which is a cooler growing region, and we're not talking about the jet wine, okay? We're talking right, about we're talking about the real Chablis. <coughs> no oak, no malolactic. No bells and whistles. Winemakers love to play with Chardonnay because they can stir the leaves, they can barrel age it, they can do malolactic fermentation, and they can put their signature on it. What they're finding now is some of the same, some California Chardonnay just isn't that great. It needs all those bells. It needs all, it needs all that makeup, all that oak. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It needs, I've, I've, it needs the makeup. Yes. And uh, there's a, I forgot who, who coined that, but I've, I've seen it. I think Woody Saluna actually talked about that. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Gervich is a great example of, of something, uh, a California Chardonnay that's just almost perfectly should be like. Uh, and he has fantastic grapes. He, was, by the way, was the man that made Chateau Montalena Chardonnay. The yeah. year it won the Paris Day scene in 1976, which brought American wines to the forefront. But it'll be interesting to see where we evolve. Our concern in the wine business is as the global market, as everybody starts doing all the same processes, everything becomes more homogenous. And uh, when you're blind tasting wines, you were speaking earlier of blind tasting, you know, it used to be so easy to tell the difference between an old world wine and a new world wine. Uh -huh. Now, it's getting tough. Uh, and the, the fear is, as we start using all these very sterile uh, uh, systems uh, worldwide, the wine's going to be more homogenous. And so that's another reason why this wine is interesting. It's out there, it's geeky, it's being preserved, and uh, they'll probably continue to make it in the style that it is today uh, without. Uh, that would be kind of like some two launches. Got it. Well, um, guys, I really appreciate you. You know, I appreciate you guys inviting me down here uh, to the barn door. Yeah, hey, what's, that, what's that big steak? Yes, yes, you know. Was it like some, 64 ounce? No, 72. 72. 72. 72. Yeah, I won't eat the 72 ounce. Uh, no, that's so Good why, lord. That's why we invited you down. Oh, see? That's not getting on camera, by the way. The best <laughs> Got an hour to eat it, my goodness. Best hand cut steaks and sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be eating here, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat before I came. I made it so uh, I'm gonna be eating here. But uh, <clears throat> I definitely appreciate you guys inviting me down here, uh, trying some wonderful wine. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, yeah, send me emails, you can friend me up on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. I'll get links for these guys. If you have any questions, you can uh, uh, Go to the websites or, or uh, contact them about anything you need. And uh, we will see everybody, everybody again on Friday. Don't know what the wine is going to be because I haven't bought any yet. So I'll be buying some wines from our newest retailer, San Antonio Specs, uh, in about a few days. Probably Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll buy some new wines. So we'll see everybody again next time. And thanks for stopping in.